Hello everyone, Mary here, and we're going to talk about how do you make a physics uh, graph on Excel specifically for physics labs. Now, first off, why do we bother making graphs to analyze our data in a physics lab? lab? Um, when we do an experiment, we're doing it to collect some sort of numeric data. And the purpose is we want to find the mathematical relationship between the measured quantities. In the experiment described here, a force is applied to a small cart and it is accelerated. Now, if you just look at the numeric data, you might say, hey, as the force gets bigger, the acceleration gets bigger. But the question is, what is the relationship? Is this a nice linear relationship, as one gets bigger, the other gets bigger? Or is it a squared relationship? As, as force gets bigger, does the acceleration go up by the square? Or is it an inverse relationship? As force gets bigger, does acceleration get bigger by one over acceleration? Because the ultimate goal in physics is to come up with a mathematical relationship. And mathematical relationships are a fancy way of saying an equation. And the equations we can use to predict what's going to happen in any sort of situation. So that's why we graph our data. We want to relate what we find numerically as data, and we want to relate them back to mathematical quantities and equations. What the graphing allows us to do, it will allow us to see trends in the numbers that we're going to have a hard time observing just by looking at those numbers alone. So it's going to allow us to see that trend that is just very difficult to see by observing that, that overall sea of numbers. It's, we're a visual species and we like observing those trends. Now when you make a physics graph there are a few rules. There are things that you need to do. First off, you must have a descriptive title. Um, if you are graphing force versus acceleration, force versus acceleration is a fine title for your graph. If you want to have one that is more descriptive of the particular experiment you're doing, that is correct as well. Each axis should be labeled with what you are graphing in units, what you are graphing and units. Each data point should be visible. Um, please check with your instructor if they insist that you have the values recorded on each point personally for my students I prefer those to be in a data table and I think they just muddy up and confuse the graph um, but those data points must be visible on the graph themselves and you want a line of best fit you do not want a connect the dots line now what is a line of best fit line of best fit shows the general trend of the data, not connect every single dot. Connect the dots was a hoot back when I was in elementary school. I enjoyed it. But what we're looking for is the trend of the data. As one gets bigger, the other gets bigger. That's what we want. The trend is so much more important than any particular one piece of data. Why? Because each experiment is full of experimental errors. If you are taking a, rel a busy beginning physics class, you are maybe measuring time with a stopwatch. Maybe you're measuring things with a meter stick. And if you are doing that, there are potential errors that are going to occur. And the trend line is going to help smooth out some of those experimental errors and make your results more correct. Now, I'm going to show you how you can put your data on the Excel graphing program and use it to help find slope and find that trend line. Now Excel is a huge monster powerful program. I'm going to show you how to do one very very small thing. Can it do other things? Absolutely. It can do hundreds of thousands of other things. So please just keep in mind we're going to look at how, at how to do this one one specific thing. So when you open Excel please choose a blank workbook. The workbook is where you enter your data. Now whatever you want to be on your x-axis is going to go in column A. Whatever you want to be on your y-axis is going to go in column B. Very often when you begin a physics course, one of the first things that you do is produce displacement versus time or velocity versus time graphs. 
in those situations, typically time is going to be on the x-axis. If you are told anything different by your instructor, please follow the instructions that your instructor in your course has told you. If you are going to produce other graphs for other experiments, check the instructions in your experiment to make sure that you're putting the right axes and the right variables on the correct axis. So I am at this point in time going to uh, go over and take a look at Excel. So we're going to pull Excel out and this is a collection of data for a displacement versus time graph that I previously typed into Excel and we're going to go through uh, graphing this very, very quickly. Now this is for accelerated motion. So this is displacement versus time. Time is going to be on my x-axis, so it's in column A. Displacement is going to be on my y-axis. It is in column B. And I am going to highlight just the data. Don't need to highlight down to China. Um, I am going to go insert charts. See this one right here, that little insert scatter? I'm going to type that. Upper left-hand corner, that's the one I want. And then move chart. In physics, we like nice big graphs on their own page. Then I'm going to choose new sheet. So it's on its own piece of paper. It's so that I can print it or insert it or save it anywhere in any document. Now, if I want to get the trend line for my data, how I do this is I am going to go on any data point. I am going to right click on any data point. When this menu comes up, see it says add trend line. I'm going to go add trend line, add trend line. And here's what occurs. Now, I know this is accelerated motion. So for displacement versus time, accelerated motion should give me a curve. And the computer thinks this is linear. I, you have to be smarter than the computer sometimes. So if the computer thinks it's linear, but you know it should be curved, you have to outsmart the computer and say, no, 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 computer. It is a polynomial. And isn't that prettier? Doesn't that show that, look, those data points much prettier. They just fall in that trend line much better, better than the linear trend line that it wanted to give us. If we want to see the equation of that line, down here it says display equation on chart. So I'm going to click that. And this is the equation for this particular line of best fit that has been shown. Now notice this does not connect the dots. Some experimental error did occur, but the trend is in place. Now if I go to chart title, um, I can type in a chart title. If I want to add axes titles, see this plus sign? I'm going to hit plus, and then I'm going to go axes title, and I can hover over axes title and hover over axes title, and I can type those in. I did that previously, and I am going to show you uh, chart one, and this is what I did earlier, and I have this completed. So I labeled this displacement and meters and time in seconds, and this is now ready to save or copy and paste into a lab report um, or print it in a paper lab report or put it into an online submission. Now let's go do a second set of data. So I'm going to go back to sheet two. This is a second set of data. This is displacement versus time squared. So I've taken the same data. I have squared the time. I have highlighted both sets of data here. So let me just do that again, make sure you follow. Highlight the data that you want to graph. I'm going to go to insert, charts, scatter. There's my data. Move chart, I want to put it on its own page. New sheet, OK. There we go, there's a nice pretty graph. I want the trend line. Right click on any data point, add trend line. Now I know that for displacement versus time squared, this should be a linear relationship. Uh, the computer and I agree this time, so I will let the computer call it linear because by gum, look, it looks pretty linear there. If I hover over chart title, I can label it. Um, if I go back to one of these data points, and I didn't do this earlier, so let me back up, and I said add trend line. It already did that, but I had to do that again so I could go to this display equation on chart and 
this is y equals blank x plus blank. Now, do you remember y equals mx plus b? This number, 1.3817, that is my slope. If you have to calculate the slope of your line, that number right there is your slope. So y equals 1.3817, that's the slope of my line, times x, plus the next number is your y-intercept, 0.0177, that is my y-intercept. And you can, if it's in an inconvenient place, you can move it to another spot on your graph. If you want to add axes titles, click on the plus sign, axes titles, and you can add those. I want to show you one more thing that is convenient, and I am going to go to chart two, because I did this previously. Um, I labeled this displacement meters and time squared in seconds squared. And the thing I want to show you is how in the world do you get seconds squared? So I'm going to go down to seconds, and I typed in seconds two down here, and I'm going to highlight that, whoop, I'm going to highlight that two. So I'm just going to, come on, I can highlight. I'm going to highlight two. Well, I'm going to highlight two. By gum, I'm going to highlight two. I don't want to delete it. There we go. I highlighted just the two. Now, if I go back to home, see this tiny little box right here, font settings? If I go there, this box comes up, and I can click superscript. Superscript will take that two and make it two squared. So now I have seconds squared down in the bottom. It is in the correct format. Again, I can hit save and uh, or copy and paste this and insert it in any sort of a lab. So that should do. I hope this is helpful to you and best of luck in all of your physics experiments.